Now, James, can you give us a refresher on what Neuron is and what you're doing with your platform? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Brandon. Um, yeah, so Neuron, we're an open source public network um, for building, finding, and connecting services. Um, so we're a, a true uh, deep in ecosystem play, um, providing infrastructure for that bridges the gap between Web 2 and Web 3. Um, really, the um, service networks suffer from performance issues such as latency, Cost issues, infrastructure costs a lot of money to uh, to to run. Um, the robustness of service networks is also quite fragile with centralization, uh, centralized servers routing routing data, um, and also there's a lot of risks associated with using intermediaries. If you're building an application on top of um, a service network, then you 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 can be wholly reliant upon. Um, that network for a living, um, you know, uh, just on the topic of deliveries, you know, think about food delivery, you know, a lot of restaurants, you stick into Google and you'll see the reliance now on places like Deliveroo and and um, uh, and taxi drivers on things like Uber. Um, so there's, there's all of these kind of uh, networks which have centralized um, and what we're trying to, you know, really our mission is to try and uh, make those more efficient by um, uh, uh, reducing the um, dependency on those intermediaries. Um, and we kind of split up DPIN. It's called DPIN, um, but I, I kind of think DPIN is just one of the channels for services. Um, so DPIN, for those who don't know, is decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Um, but physical infrastructure is just one component. So it includes things like IoT devices, communication devices, geospatial, maybe mobility and energy services. Um, so anything that's not kind of physical out there in the real world doing things. Um, and then you have uh, digital resources, and that can be things like data storage. So you might be familiar with things like Filecoin. I would class that within this ecosystem as well. It's providing a, a data storage service, um, indexing services, video streaming services, VPN services. Um, and then the final category is human-based resources. So we've got physical resources, digital resources, and now human resources. So human resources is things similar to what QuickPick do with um, you know, ride sharing and food delivery. Um, home cleaning services, web and media services. So anyone where where you've got a service being provided by a person and someone else wants that, then then that would that would class uh, as a as a human resource. So um, we've launched uh, the first use case, which is uh, around aviation, um, which is basically connecting ground-based aircraft tracking sensors into drone systems and air traffic control systems for um you know for airports um and we've had a lot of traction in that we've uh won um multiple uh projects so about six or seven projects now uh we actually recently won um won last week um uh which I, i'll get get onto in a moment but um we you know we've we've won some big projects done multiple integrations with some big oems and uh, aerospace giants um and really we're now transitioning from these private uh, testnet environment to now a public testnet environment where the community can now get involved. Um, so we're in that transition at the moment um, with a lot of really exciting stuff coming out in the next couple of months. And can you just uh, remind us how exactly you're leveraging the Hedera network? Yeah, sure. So we, um, you know, Deepin is actually a brilliant use case for, for Hedera because we, we have to use every single service. I don't think there's any service that we're not using yet. Um, and like I actually found out about something called Guardian the other day, which was quite interesting and in how we might even be able to use that potentially. So um, we won't get onto that quite yet. But uh, but we, we generally use um, the smart contract features for uh, registering devices and services in the network. Um, and we also um, plan to use it for our uh, um, uh, what, what they call a dispute resolution service. Um, now that's still immature at the moment. It's very centralized. The dispute resolution process is, is quite centralized at the moment, but we plan to decentralize that with smart contracts. Um, regarding HTS, um, we need payments to go through the network. So we are leveraging USDC as the preferred payment platform, but that is configurable within the, the environment that we use. Um, and then uh, we plan to uh, use a token, which is basically going to be used for insurance of the services. So you can think of, you know, if I'm if I'm providing a service to someone through a Web three world, how do 
how do you gain that trust from them that that you're actually going to deliver the service um and so the token is really an insurance on that service provision um so that's the, that's the token element and then hcs um really hcs is really good for fast quick communication and proof and uh, event recording um so uh, the the main things that we're using that for the, at the moment are things such as scheduling the beginning of a st service and and doing things like key exchanges uh um uh, determining how long the service is going to be running for um and sharing things like where is the service what, what's the location what's the current location because services can sometimes move you know if you're a, a delivery driver for example then you might not be in the same place at the same same time so what this allows us to do really is to um have very quick uh cheap communication between the two parties that can be verified um and receipted essentially um and and one of those components in particular for the aviation use case is around the auditing of data so we can go back if there were an event we can go back to a previous time and say oh yeah that's exactly what happened that's the data that was recorded at that time i can verify that this you haven't tampered with that data and that's from an air safety uh, um, air accident investigation perspective is a really useful feature while we're waiting for him, James, I'm going to go back to you. You kind of already touched on this, but can you walk us through the traction Neuron has gained so far, including some of the ones that you mentioned work with both the national and local governments over there in the UK? Yeah, sure. So, um, so you know, we're we're undergoing a really uh, big change in aviation at the moment, with traditional aviation working on sort of analog radios um, and you know rules of the air, uh, and and moving towards a more digital world where you know flights are being tracked, um, data is being ingested by new autonomous aircraft such as drones, air taxis, um, and uh, and others, and uh, you know we're also also seeing a move towards electric aviation. Um, and uh, there's been um, some really big projects in the UK that we've been involved with that were uh, um, funded by UK government um, to help in this process. Um, and um, as part of those projects, we have done multiple integrations. I think it's up to about eight integrations now. Um, with different uh, software providers who or manufacturers of of drone equipment or air traffic control equipment um that, that basically are ingesting the data and pushing that into their systems um and so what we've been doing um over the last uh, few years is really proving out all of those systems making sure that we meet regulatory requirements ensuring we've got a clear go to market on in terms of how that scales um, and really building those relationships with all of those different companies. So some you may may know of people like Collins Aerospace. Um, they're a big um, uh, OEM who um, are actually part of the Raytheon group um, who we did an integration with them uh, last year. And, um, uh, that, you know, they're very, very keen and interested in, in this kind of data. So, um, you know, really at the moment, the traction is is really about integrations. Now, the next step for us is is all about how do we scale the sensor network, and that's where the community come in. Um, in terms of other traction we've had, with you know, we we actually won um, a contract last week. So, uh, Milton Keynes City Council, um, they've basically uh, awarded us with a contract to deploy sensor networks across their city. Um, uh, we've actually got uh, some community members, one of our earliest community members um, who's who was uh, taking part in our private uh, private um, alpha testing. Uh, he uh, he's actually based in Milton Keynes, which is ideal for us. Um, so we're we're basically trying to at the moment scale sensor networks. Um, we've worked with some of the biggest um, aerospace companies out there, people like Sirium, who are one of the biggest uh, aviation data companies, uh, people like um, Amy, who are one of the uh, big sort of um, uh, asset managers. Um, and then you've got, um, what's the other one, uh, Atkins, who are a big um, sort of, I guess, asset consulting group and technology group. Um, and so we've been working with a, a lot of different companies in different different ways. Um, but but really, the key the key uh, value chain for us is about integrating with different software providers um, and also uh, making that transition between a Web 2 world and Web 3 world where, you know, these big companies, they, you know, uh, Web 3 kind of scares people sometimes. And you need an abstraction layer between the network and the customers so that they can actually use 
uh, Web3 in an easy way, you know, especially when you're passing payments between parties. How do you onboard them? How do you how do how can someone sign up to an account with an email and a password? And how do they, um, you know, onboard with with fiat, with a debit credit card or even with direct debits? Um, and there's a lot of work obviously going on by different ecosystem players, um, some of which in the in the Hedera ecosystem. Um, so really, you know, uh, our focus has been on integrations, getting people using data, getting people familiar with the, with the network that we're building. Um, and now we're in that stage of scaling it so that we can actually provide real value, which is what, you know, data ultimately, the more the more sensors we have, the more data we have, the more valuable the network becomes. So, um, you know, one of the one of the companies that we've been working with or um, uh, a company called Talis, who are based in, um, well, they're, they're, they're a French company, but they, I think they run about 45% of the world's air traffic control systems as an, as an example. Um, so, you know, really what we need to be able to do now is turn it from a, uh, okay, we've proven it works. We've proven that, that everything, you know, comes through to, okay, now we're starting to scale the networks and selling data through, through the network. Um, and that's, that's really probably a, a a high high level summary. I'm probably sure there's tons of stuff that I've forgotten, but um, but that gives you the overview. So, I, James, with that local um, government collaboration that you have going on, you said you have to deploy the sensors. How many sensors do you have to deploy for it to be effective? Um, is that being done by you? Are you are you going to have a bunch of community me- members do that? And how do you incentivize those community members if that's how you're going about this this first proof of concept? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, it it depends on the kind of application. So at, at a very high level, you know, as a simple level, um, a very wide spacing of sensors, you know, every 50 to 100 kilometers um, still provides a very, you know, large amount of value. You can track most aircraft at high altitudes with that, which is where most passenger airlines fly. Um, as you start looking down in the altitude spectrum, so when you start looking at, you know, sub thousand feet above ground level, that's where a lot of the new aircraft are going to be entering this, the, the the ecosystem. So drones, drone deliveries, um, and things like this. Um, you know, we're actually part of a group with Google Wing and Amazon drone delivery um, uh, in the UK uh, with uh, the National Air Traffic Service. Um, so a lot of these these kind of components, we're 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 sort of um, designing uh, all the the traffic management aspects they're designing at the moment. Um, uh, and due to deliver, I think uh, later on in the year. But um, one of uh, really the the key is about what altitude you want to detect things at. And when you start getting down to say 500 to 1,000 feet, um, you really need sensors sort of every 10 kilometers or so. Um, in particular, around areas where drones want to fly. And um, good for us that drones are generally, you know, where there's things that are interesting, drones generally tend to want to fly there. So, and that's in big cities, towns, villages, um, and between big cities, towns, and villages as well, um, and around important assets uh, where there are generally people. So, what we're looking at, uh, or well, what we're we're, do- we're going to be doing, um, is uh, in April the product will launch publicly. Um, in a testnet environment, um, and there will be an opportunity for community members to take part in uh, in contributing uh, data, sensor data to that network. So they'll be able to purchase a, a sensor. They're, they're fairly fairly cheap, um, around about the five five to six hundred pound mark. So you know, affordable, uh, certainly affordable. And um, you you can you you essentially be able to plug them in, um, configure it, uh, register it with the network. Um, and then contribute data in exchange for awards. Um, at the moment, uh, the rewards are going to be um, uh, like a points-based system in, as a, in a testnet environment, and then we plan to tra- uh, transfer that into a, a token-based reward um, later on in the year. We're aiming currently aiming for August. Um, that's you know, as with any token launch, we want to make sure we get it correct first. You know, uh, first time around. Um, and um yeah that's that's the that's the plan at the moment and um you know the the aim of this is really to go and get community members incentivized to want to contribute to the network and to give back to the community who are helping us to do that yeah i'd i'd again echo um echo what what was just said in terms of the community it's been absolutely awesome um you know just the amount of support you get we, we we're getting for for what we're doing is is incredible and you know really you know uh, big thanks to the to the community for supporting us. Um, 
really uh, i guess it's now our, our our turn to deliver on um you know providing a really really valuable product to for the ecosystem that is going to help other other companies come in um and deliver deliver other applications um so you know keep your eyes tuned there are some big announcements coming out over the next 6 to 8 weeks um several of of wit you know there's not just one there's going to be about two or three big announcements um with releases of how how you can get involved how you could buy sensors how you can connect them into the network um the uh, everything map is going to go live um and uh, and um, a number of other sort of a- applications and, and traction uh, examples that we've got coming up as well. So um, yeah, I'd say stay tuned. You know, subscribe and uh, and we'll we'll uh, keep you all informed of progress.